All right, I have a new one for you today. This is a card game, an addictive little card game in my opinion, called Ramen Ramen. And I recently picked this up and I've played it a bunch of times and I, I wanted to share it with you. I love the art. I like ramen, which helps, right? So the theme is uh, delicious as far as I'm concerned. Um, you get a bunch of cards here. You get a bunch of ingredients, right? And there are exactly seven different ingredients. And each uh, set of ingredients is zero to seven with no repeated numbers, okay? That's the deck. You have this handy dandy guide which uh, has the scoring on there. It's a one to four player game. And uh, I'm gonna tell you briefly uh, the differences between the solo game, the two player game, the three player game, and the four player game. Here's the instruction manual. It's, it's pretty easy. It's an easy going game, all right? This is not a difficult game to play. Um, it's easy going, it's enjoyable, and uh, in my opinion, like I said earlier, quite addictive. So let me go over the uh, solo game first. So you got these three bulls, all right? You have all these cards. What you're gonna do is you're gonna set up what is called the fridge. You're gonna place four cards in this area here. Uh, this is the fridge, and then you're going to deal four cards to yourself. You're always going to have uh, four cards in your hand. So, uh, at the beginning of your turn in the solitaire game, you have to place two cards, uh, but in two different bowls. I can't place two cards in one bowl. I have to place two cards, one in each uh, different bowl, all right? So, let's say that I decide to play this here, and I decide to play this there, okay? Um, well, the next thing I do is pull a card from the fridge into my hand. So let's say I decide to take this card into my hand. Then from the draw pile, you replace that card in the fridge. So you're always going to have four cards in the fridge. And then from the draw pile, I place another card in my hand. But you're probably wondering, gee, Alex, I mean, what are all these numbers? I mean, what's the deal here? Well. The deal with these numbers is that a bowl is ready to be served when you've hit 14 points or more. Then it's ready to be served. And I'll give you that example in just a second. Because end, end game scoring has nothing to do with these numbers. That's just so you can you know play the game. The end game scoring has to do with how many ingredients in each of the bowls you collect. Right? So if you have here uh, three ingredients, three different types, you're going to score two points. If you have seven different types, which is every single type that is available, right? One of each, uh, you get 10 points. So as you can see there, uh, that's how you score points at the end of the game. So the numbers here are just so you can play the game. So let's say, uh, let me do another turn here very quickly. Let's. Uh, and, and, by the way, it's not smart to put the same ingredient on the bowl because if, let's say we put a whole bunch of the same ingredients on a bowl. Well, you only have one ingredient in that case, right? So you get zero points of that, that bowl. It doesn't make a, the bowl of ramen too interesting. So let's say we have this situation here, five. And uh, let's say I put that here. Then I take this here, I replace this, and then I put one in my hand, and then I play it here, and I play this there. So now we have 11 points here, right? And then let's say I take this six, I replace the, the card in the fridge, I put another one in my hand, and let's say uh, this turn I decide to put that six there, and I put a, a three, the three there, okay? Now, this bowl, this is not ready to serve, this is not ready to serve, but this one has hit 14 or over, so this one is ready to serve. So at this point, I would take these cards and I would place them here. That's one bowl that I was that I managed to serve. And you're gonna be doing that, right? We, we start another, uh, another uh, round, replacing the card in the fridge, drawing another card into your hand, and then you keep playing. So you're gonna be collecting different different bowls here. I usually separate my bowls this way, right? I, I, you know, so you know that there are different bowls, right? Or you can you know, put them face up. However you wanna separate them, you can line them up if you have the, the room on, on the table. But I like to do something like this. 
and then uh, the next uh, the next bowl I'll put I'll put up this way, and then the next bowl this way because in a solitaire you're going to be collecting a lot of bowls. In the end, you're going to be grabbing this, for instance, this is one of the bowls as an example, and you're going to look at how many ingredients there are. In this case, there's three different ingredients. Okay, so we look at the score here: three different ingredients. That's two points. So that's two points that I got for this particular bowl. So then I put that off to the side. I grab the next bowl. Here we have we have three ingredients because these two are the same, right? So we, we have three ingredients. We look at the little list here, three ingredients, another two points. So we, we score another two points. And then we go on like that and that's how we do our score. And it's pretty cool because in the solitaire, you have this thing here. Uh, you're trying to beat your own score, right? The critics have spoken, so you know it tells you that. Like for instance, I just played a game recently. I got 46, which is ramen declared exceptionally average. So I find this kind of cute. It's interesting. You're trying to beat your own score, but the solitaire game is, um, you know, it feels very much like you know a solitaire game. It's a little pastime. I mean, you do have choices. You do have to think about what you're doing, um, but it's an, a very easygoing solitaire game, and you're just trying to beat your score. So that's the solitaire. That's the one-player game. Let me tell you now about the two-player game because that's interesting too. Same setup, right? Same setup. You got the three bowls. This is for the two-player game. You got your fridge, and then you got four cards, and your opponent has four cards, right? So it's your turn. You're going to play exactly like you did in the solitaire. You have to place two cards in different bowls, right? So I place this one here, and I place this one here. Then I choose one from the fridge. I replace it and then I pick one up in my hand. That's the end of my turn. Now it's my opponent's turn. My opponent looks at this, he decides to put this one here and this one here. He wants to take this one, that's replaced. Then he puts another one in his hand and that's it. Now it's my turn again. So you go on like that until a bowl scores. Now, whoever scores the bowl, and remember scoring the bowl is having 14 or more points. Whoever scores the bowl, takes that bowl, right? Because the, the, the way the, the, the turns work is you, you place the cards, right? You, play, you, you place the cards, uh, you, you, you know, you take um, a card from the fridge, you replace all that. If the bowl has, if one of the bowls has 14 or more points, you score it and then you keep it. That means you scored it. So that's the two player game, okay? You're, you're both gonna be fighting to score these bowls. All right, let's go, which is very enjoyable. I've played this a few times as a, as a two player. I really like it. So I like it as a solitaire. I like it as a two player game. Now let's talk about the three player game. This is interesting, the three player game, because in the three player game, each player has their own bowl, okay? You still have the fridge. You still have the fridge. Everybody still gets four cards, right? Each player gets four cards, right? But each player has their own bowl, but the rules are the same, all right? On your turn, I still have to, you know, let's say this one here is my bowl, all right? This blue one is my bowl. Um, I still have to place two cards in two different bowls. So, okay, I, I can place one on my bowl, but, I, I, but the next card I have to place in somebody else's bowl. So maybe I, I put it in this bowl, all right? And then I choose a card from the fridge. That gets replaced, you know, just like in the solitaire and the two player game. And then I draw one into my hand. So at the end of my turn, I'm gonna have four cards. Now what's interesting here is that I only, I only score uh, bowls uh, that are ready to serve on my card. So each player is only going to score bowls that are on their particular card. So the three player game is also interesting because you're forced to play cards, you know, in, in, in other people's bowls, but you want to win. So, you know, you do have some interesting decisions to make here. So the three player game, very cool. I really enjoy it. Now the four player game, you're going to have to play in teams. Okay, so what happens is one team has one bowl, one bowl is in the center, it's for both teams, 
and another bowl is for the other team, okay? And the teams uh, sit across from each other. And you play the rounds exactly the same way. On your turn, you have to play, you, you get four cards. On your turn, you have to play uh, two cards into different bowls, okay? So I may choose to play a card in, this is my team's bowl, so we, we play a card there. And then we play one into the community bowl, all right? And, uh, you know, and again, you take one card from the fridge, replace it, and then take another one into your hand. And that's the end of my turn. Now, in the four-player game, in the team game, you only uh, score ready-to-serve bowls that are either uh, your team's bowl, which would this would be ours, or the community bowl. That's it. But again, very interesting choices because... You know, I thought initially, I said, well, okay, in a four in a, in a team game, I'm never going to put a card on my opponent's bowl. Why am I going to help my opponent score, right? I'm just going to put cards into our team's bowl, and then I'll put it in the community bowl. But what's interesting here is that um, that's not entirely true. You know, before I tried the four-player game, that, that's what I, you know, I just thought real quickly about it. And I said, well, why would I put a card? At all? Well, you'd put a card over there because you want repeated cards on your opponent's bowl. <laughs> you know, like here is a, um, a, a, a Ajitama card. So let's say my, my opponent has that. You know, and it's my turn. I might want to throw another Ajitama on there because remember, at the at the at the end of the game, when you score, you're not scoring these numbers up here. You're scoring how many different ingredients you have, right? So in in a team game, uh, just like in a three-player game, you may uh, put cards in somebody else's bowl just to make them have less ingredients. You know, because as soon as they hit 14 or more, they have to, the bowl's ready to serve, they have to take it. So it, it is a, you know, it's a neatly designed game. I, I, I've really been enjoying this um, as a solo, as a two-player game, as a three-player game, and as a four-player game. I think this is a neat card game that's going to be around for a long time. It's a fun game. Uh, you know, you can casually play it. The solitaire is very pleasurable. It's nice. It's easy going. It, it's fun. And if you like ramen, <laughs> you know, that's a bonus. Even, even, uh, you know, it's a plus. It's definitely a plus. So that's it. I wanted to introduce you to ramen ramen. I am going to do a solitaire playthrough of this. Uh, just so you can get a real feel uh, for how the solitaire game is played. I've already showed it to you here, but I, I want to do a, a full solitaire playthrough of this. So I'll, I'll record it uh, soon and I'll, I'll post it here on the channel. But that's it. Wanted to introduce you to Ramen Ramen, uh, an easygoing, enjoyable game. Go get one.